it is time. It is time to discuss fall vegetable gardening here in Florida. Today, what we're gonna be talking about is the month of August, what to plant, and tips that you need to know so that you can have a successful August, Florida. I was gonna say vegetable garden, but not just vegetable garden, tropicals, flowers, all of it. But today, before I get into what's a plant, let's talk really quickly about some of the things that are just happening in the environment so that we can start to wrap our heads around why we are or are not gonna start the things we're gonna start and do some of the tips that I'm gonna recommend later. So it is hot, we're all aware. <laughs> it's hot and it's very humid. <laughs> did, did you not know that? <laughs> Welcome to my video so I can explain that to you. <laughs> but what usually happens in the month of August, and this year I suspect is gonna be a little bit different, is that yes, we're gonna be very hot like usual. We're gonna be very humid like usual. We are gonna still have very high sun intensity like usual. What we usually see in the month of August is a lot of similar to what we typically get in July, which is like it's three o'clock, we're getting dumping rain every single day. And usually the beginning of the month sits very similar to that. But as we transition to like mid-August and late August, a lot of times what we start to see, especially in North Florida and North Central Florida and then into Central Florida, is that we start to get kind of more sporadic rainstorms. So we'll go a couple days and then it rains and then a couple days and then it rains. But when it rains, the rains tend to be a little bit heavier. So we actually in the month of August get very similar amounts of water as we do in July. But instead of it being kind of like an even amount every day, we start to get these kind of heavier deluges, which often leads many of us in the end of month of August to losing a lot of seedlings or in the beginning of September. But with this year, with us having such hot ocean temperatures, and what I'm talking about is, is that when we look at August year over year, we're seeing a much warmer Atlantic Ocean and of course then much warmer <laughs> Gulf of Mexico. What I suspect is we're gonna probably have more consistent rains throughout the month of August, which can be a good thing in some ways and it might be a challenging thing in some ways when we get into this first section, which is what veggies are we supposed to be planting this month? So when it comes to the month of August and the vegetables that we should be planting here in Florida is we should be considering doing, well, our classic warm weather crops. And this is by starting by seed. Now you some places, maybe in North Florida, might be able to pick up some starts that are in varieties that you want. But if you want to start by seed, this is the time for it. And one of the things that we wanna focus on with starting seeds in August is we're looking for some of the larger varieties. So while you could start something like an Everglades tomato, if you've been interested in doing some of those big juicy tomato plants, this is actually the time that we wanna start them because we want this plant to grow. And then when it warms back up in the late winter time period, they have time to put on these nice big fruits before all the bugs come and eat them. So if you've been considering and thinking about larger tomatoes, this would be the time of year to start planting them. Now my South Floridians, you're gonna wanna wait a little bit longer because y'all just, just stay really hot. I know, I grew up down there. It's just too hot. <laughs> Another thing that you wanna be considering is doing things like peppers. Of course, my neighbors had gotten me these ahi dulces, which they just pulled from their plant, but I was able to find them if you've been interested in doing them over at Southern Exposure, so consider getting some of these. But these and a lot of peppers that I usually recommend are ones that can handle the pest pressure, the heat, the humidity. But if you've been thinking about doing something more like a classic bell pepper, again, similar to our tomatoes, this would be a great time to start them. So you're thinking more like your California sweet, which I'm still not convinced, or was it California wonder, which I'm not convinced actually does very well here in Florida but they seem to say it does so if you were gonna try a crop like that I would start that now so that it can go and produce fruit in the cooler months later you won't be getting harvest right now this is all for like later <laughs> and they're starting them in seeds now and in the month of August for North Florida and Central Florida this is actually one of the first months that you can actually start to do cold weather crops now I'm not talking about things like lettuce lettuce is not gonna do well by the time it like sprouts into a little seedling it's there's too much bug pressure because that's one of the challenges about fall is that we can be like, yay, fall vegetable garden season. We're back into the classic garden season. But one of the big challenges is that unlike in, you know, late winter and spring when we are doing cold weather crops, uh, there's tons of bugs right now. So your teeny tiny little leafy, little leafy lettuce is just, it's just, it's gonna, they're gonna eat it. 
They're gonna eat it so fast. So no lettuces, none of those like nice soft greens, no. But things like onions and carrots, you could get those sprouted. Though things like carrots, even be careful with that because we do know that's a host plant to the black swallowtail and they're around. I just saw one in my garden yesterday. So you wanna keep these seedlings under some sort of protection. So do consider having bug netting because they're just here. They're here and they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Another thing to consider is moving away from things like your seminal pumpkins, though you could still plant some seminal pumpkins. I did at this time two years ago, three years ago, something like that, which again, I found some of the seedlings at Southern Exposure. So if you're interested in getting that, just go over there. If you want to get into some of the other types of squashes, like, I don't know, a butternut squash, which seminal pumpkin tastes just like, but you know what I'm saying? Like if you want to go do other types of pumpkins, or if you want to get into your zucchinis, or if you want to get into your summer squash, like this is also the time of year you can get those seedlings going. And for those who enjoy and love and always want to grow corn, you can start growing corn now, but <laughs> this becomes kind of one of those crops that depending on how this year goes, this might be a struggle. And if the ocean waters are staying as warm as they are, I suspect we're gonna have a much warmer fall than typical and therefore a much warmer early winter, which, and potentially then have lots and lots of rain because of that, because that's just how Florida keeps itself cool. It's just waters everywhere. If it's heating up, it falls back down. Well, with wind pollinated plants, they can sometimes struggle and get moldy and gross pretty quickly from all the rain. So mm, I don't know, maybe you want to do it. Maybe you don't, who knows, but if you've really been passionate about it, this will be the time to go get back into corn or hold off a little bit. You could do it next month too. But before I move locations and start talking to you about some tropical plants, I actually want to switch ahead to going ahead and thinking about putting in native flowers. Because as we talk about planting these warm weather crops, one of the things that many of these warm weather crops need, besides that corn, but things like your tomatoes, your peppers, your squashes, well, they need pollinators. And of course our pollinators love our native plants the best. Now, while a lot of native flowers that have been going since spring are starting to fade out, there's actually a whole bunch of native flowers that actually come into bloom in the fall season. From things like our goldenrods, which is this big plant over here, to blazing star, which is a liatris, there's some back there. They haven't gone into bloom yet, but they're back there and they're ready to go. Or one of the plants that went from fall and now it's gonna go right into winter with blooming and amazingly, which is our salt and pepper plant, Melanthera nivea. Having these plants around your vegetable garden, pulling in pollinators, pulling in beneficial predatory insects is gonna put you in a really, really good spot as the pest pressure sits through the rest of the fall. So consider if you haven't started adding native wildflowers to your garden, this might be one of the first times that you should consider doing it. And we kind of been talking about bugs as a bad thing, but you know what's about to happen? I mean, we're getting really close to the time period and it may have already started up north and that's the giant monarch migration. Now for Central and South Floridians, we do actually have an overwintering population of monarchs, but for North Floridians and North Central Floridians, you are about to have the season where spectacular amounts of monarchs make their way through. So this would be a fantastic time to get your hands on one of our native milkweeds from native swamp milkweed, native aquatic milkweed, and native butterfly weed. These three major plants are amazing, amazing at attracting butterflies to your yard as they make their grand journey down to Central America. And I feel like no other butterfly is like as good at getting you hooked <laughs> to getting into wildflowers and supporting all our wildlife like the monarch. So if you haven't gotten monarchs to your garden, strongly consider adding some of our native milkweed. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna put a video which is a crash course on milkweed so that if you're not sure how this all works, it's all there. There's a whole series actually on milkweed and monarchs that you should jump into because fall is a great time. Which leads me to another point about these native wildflowers. And if you've been considering thinking about getting into native wildflowers, actually this is a really great time for all of those who've been thinking about starting a wildflower meadow or big strips of wildflowers to save a lot of costs by growing them from seed. When we look at our native wildflowers like natural cycle, they have been blooming strong in spring and summer and some will be finishing up as we head into fall though some will still go through fall but after they flower what they do is they set seed and then they start dropping their seeds everywhere so that next year's round of wildflowers can grow and be brilliant and bloom so if you've been thinking about doing a native wildflower garden or just having a wildflower bed where you start your own plants and maybe make it a little bit more um less wild and a little bit more manicured i highly recommend using Florida's Wildflower Cooperative to obtain seeds. The company that actually does 
get actual Florida native ecotypes. This company, I know there's a bunch of you out there who have been trying to figure out where you get seeds from. So this has worked a lot with the Florida Wildflower Foundation for a long, long, long time to ensure that they have seeds that are actually the actual Florida ecotype. Because for those who have been in the wanting to get into Florida native wildflower thing, you probably found a lot of times that if you want to try to get like purple cone flower, these are purple cone flowers that are from you know, outside of Florida. So they don't necessarily work as well here or certain Coreopsis or our bees balm. And there's a lot of stuff like you can just get really tripped up really easily, even including things like our native milkweeds like butterfly weed. They exist in many states and they just don't work as well here in Florida because they're not our specific ecotype. But the flower wild, how do I say this? The Florida wildflower cooperative works on obtaining Florida ecotype seeds. So these would be the ones that work the best for your garden. I'll put a link in the description later so that you can check them out too. And if you're wondering of some wildflowers that would be really good ones to bring into your garden that add a lot of like bam, a couple that I would recommend that are starting to go into bloom right now is one is our native bee balm, also called dotted horse mint. What you see right now is they put out these huge stems, really pretty, and what happens is they start to flower, but they're technically bracts, and they start to turn this whitish, pinkish color. Very beautiful, can add a lot of color. This is actually one of our native edible plants, so you can actually use this as an herb substitute. So it's like a win-win-win. Giant bumblebees love it. Giant carpenter bees love that. And if you place this near your squash plants, it is a win-win for you because those bumblebees and carpenter bees are actually what are one of the most efficient types of native bees for pollinating squash plants. And like we talked about last month, our goldenrod will be going into a massive amount of bloom, which helps our monarchs migrate and is a great attractor of predatory wasps that are gonna be amazing at eating all those little buggies that are getting on your vegetable crops. So putting this nearby, but a little contained because they do dump a lot of seeds out. It can add a lot of gorgeous yellow fall color while also creating a lot of benefits for your garden. And the two plants that I would recommend that, oh, there's literally like a bumblebee, there's a carpenter bee right behind you guys actually help pollinating my Puerto Rican black bean right now. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like it's just happening all the time, all around here, it just keeps going. And if you're looking for some plants that are gonna help you with pollination as we head into the colder months, two of the ones that I would highly recommend is of course that salt and pepper, and then the other one would be starry rostin weed. Starry rostin weed has been one of the plants here in zone 10a that has bloomed almost the entirety of the year. I actually, when I think back and I've looked at my notes, there hasn't been a month yet that it hasn't bloomed other than when I think we had the hurricane, it knocked off the blooms last year, but I feel like that's a justifiable. So if you're looking for, you can invest in a plant right now and then have it go and bloom for you all year round, definitely consider adding starry rostin weed near your vegetable garden or in a nice little flower bed. Okay, let's talk our tropical fruiting plants, our tropical vegetables <laughs> and what you should plant in the month of August. Well, if you've been thinking about doing bananas and papayas and all those fun things that I've talked to you about, well, now we need to stop. We are getting too close to the cooler months and the months where we go into drought season for these plants to get well established. So I would hold off until we get back around six months from now to do any of these type of plants. And unsurprisingly, the list for tropical fruits and vegetables is actually quite short for this time of year because if we're wanting to establish them, we don't have a lot of time before it potentially gets too cold for them. But my South Floridians, especially my Miamis and my Key West, you actually do have a little bit more time for tropical plants. <laughs> so if you guys are interested, feel free, but Central Florida, North Florida, you're done. Unless you're considering doing things like pineapple, sugarcane, and you want to use a tropical alternative to things like classic spinach and do like a tropical Malabar spinach instead. Now let's get into some of the other tips that you should be thinking about in the month of August, which some of them are going to be similar to June and July, which is it's hot, it's humid, the sun's intense. So stay out of the direct middle of the day sun. And it gets really tricky at this time of year. I find even walking the dogs before the sun rises, it's just still so hot and humid out. Be really mindful of the things that you need to get done versus things that maybe you can hold off on. Maybe they'll be a little bit harder to do, but it'll be much safer to do at a later time period, maybe later in the month of August or just wait till September. So I strongly recommend not doing large projects, but you, maybe like me, you need to get a lot of work done to start your fall vegetable garden. So just make sure that you bring lots of icy water, electrolytes, of course, put hats on, sleeves, 
cover up with cooling type materials. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, I do need to do a lot of stuff for fall and I'm not really sure what I should be thinking about as I get ready for it, beyond just like what things should you be planting, I just did a video that takes you through tons of questions that you should ask yourself in order to get ready to plan. And I take you through my planning process. So I will link that video at the end. Uh, and it's got some really good tips in it because one of those things is one of the things I want you to start thinking about because we just talked a lot about the beginning of the classic vegetable season, but every year, not usually in August, but in early September, every year for like the last two, three years, we've had a rainstorm that comes through, not just here in St. Pete, but all across Florida, where we go days and days and days without any rain and then bam, here comes five inches of rain in like 24 hours. It's really bad. Tons of people lose their seedlings. So one of the things that I want you thinking about for the month of August as you're getting all these seedlings ready to go for fall vegetables and winter vegetable crops is where are you gonna be putting your seedlings? I have some ideas that I put in that video, but it's something that you really need to consider because it's coming and it happens every year. I'm melting, I'm melting, I'm melting. And August, August is, I don't know, my first hurricane was Hurricane Andrew and that was August. So to me, August, September, October are usually, if we're gonna get hit, is the big season for having storms. So I will link the what should you or shouldn't you move based on how strong the storm is. I'll link that video at the end because it's a good reference that if you're in the, if you do have to prepare, that you just know what stuff you need to go and really manage and what stuff you don't. Cause when you don't have a lot of time when a storm's coming your way, like you don't wanna move. Cause sometimes I feel like the news, they're just like, you have to move everything. Um, but I take you guys through in that video with my dad who, who is a retired emergency services director. Like if it's a cat one versus a cat five, like what do we need to worry about and what should we just be like, ah, leave it, let's get going. I know I talked a lot about adding native plants for your vegetable garden, but honestly, if you're into butterfly gardening, which I'm a big fan of butterfly gardening, this is a great time of year to start butterfly gardening, especially if you live in central and south Florida. There is a lot of butterflies about to start migrating and a lot of them migrate to Florida, especially in the fall. So, and we're kind of hitting, we're getting really close to those couple of months where a bunch of types of butterflies are gonna come funneling through Florida. So if you go ahead and get a butterfly garden established now, and I have like a whole playlist on all sorts of things butterfly gardening, which I will add at the end because I honestly feel like it is a big opportunity area. And I know some of y'all aren't even into edible gardens, but like I have videos on how to start it, how to plant it, how to pick it out. Um, I've done, like you can do it in containers and small spaces. I've done edible butterfly plants and all sorts of fun stuff in there. All sorts of fun stuff, which you should really, really consider. I just feel like butterfly gardening is like the best. And we've got a lot between our giant swallowtails right now, black swallowtails in my garden, monarch, we've got so many monarchs. I've got so many monarchs around here. They're beating each other up all the time. Gulf fritillary, zebra longwings, white peacocks, blue cassius. Who else is here? Let me look around. Everyone's going away because it's, it's gross out. The butterflies don't like the heat either. <laughs> no, nobody likes it this hot. It's so disgusting. The other, other thing you should consider, I don't know, I'm really big into wildlife gardening, but if you have been thinking about doing wildlife gardening, just like butterflies, it's about to be the huge migratory season for a lot of bird species. And what a lot of people don't realize is, but Florida is the great avian causeway, which means that there's tons of migratory species that have to funnel down and come through Florida. And that's why all of our yards are so, so important for all these migratory species. So having native plants with native berries and native seeds and lots of bugs for them to eat, which butterfly gardening is a great way to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> Most butterfly gardeners don't like that, but you know, it's like it's all, it's the circle of life. But it is a great time to think about adding some of those plants because the birds are coming and they really, really, really do need the food from our garden. And it's just like fun having birds. Like a lot of us have like blue jays and mockingbirds. That's pretty common in Florida, but like you can get so many other types. Like I get tons of brown thrashers. I've gotten robins, different types of sparrows. Oh, I got, was it a purple finch? I don't know. I'll put the name of what I got. I was so excited. They're not as common to see in this area. And like, I got one. And besides the fact that we've been getting Cooper's hawks, we've had some ospreys visiting. Uh, we had ducks a few months ago, which is pretty cool. Like you can just get lots of cool wildlife hanging out with you in your garden. I'm all about it. You should think about doing it too. Speaking of birds, Mama Mockingbird is right there. Her nest is right here. She's not happy I'm sitting around it right now. <laughs> She's been eyeing me this whole time. Like, where are you going, Jacqueline? Not coming near my nest, are you? 
a lot of these tips that I gave you are coming out of the 2023 Wild Floridian Planner. But here's the thing, this is only gonna be sold for a short amount of time at www.wildfloridian.net slash planner because we are working on the 2024. And if you wanna stay up to date with the behind the scenes slash when it's gonna go on pre-sale so that we can ship it out in fall, that's gonna be at www.wildfloridian.net slash planner presale. But if you're looking for a crash course on milkweed as you consider doing a butterfly garden, check out this video series right here or go ahead and learn lots of stuff about butterfly gardening with this video series right here, or go ahead and get tips on what you should or shouldn't move on hurricanes right here. And of course, last but not least, what you really need to be doing right now is planning for your vegetable garden. Get all the tips and questions that you should be thinking about in this video right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.